All right. Hello, everybody. So it wasn't very long ago, just about three days ago, that the government of Japan had released a new update stating that uh, they will be ending all of the uh, border restrictions, everything, anything that had to do with even the app. It's all going to be going away and they're returning to sort of the system that they had before asterisk marks because we never really know for sure if it's going to change. There's a link in the description if you're planning to come to Japan between now and May 8th, which is the magical day. I highly recommend that you go on to uh, the Ministry of, of uh, Health, Welfare and Labor or Health, Health, Lo Health Labor and Welfare and uh, also MOFA, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, that is where you will get the definitive source on what you need to do to arrive into Japan. Um, it still has to do with the Visit Japan web. It's not an app. It is actually something you would use on your smartphone browser because the app had some problems with privacy and all this other stuff, tracking and things like this. They went to a web-based system. This changed last year. Uh, it crossed over around November when they reopened the borders uh, to just about everybody. Um, even China, which is a country that had the most restrictions on them because of, of their policies, uh, now has pretty much can enter into Japan fairly openly. So we will see if tourism returns from across our pond, which is, you know, the Sea of Japan over there in, in uh, China. We haven't seen too many uh, people from China coming to visit yet. But starting on May 8th, this is important because this is the date that Japan originally uh, decided that they were going to downgrade. This happened like back in February, I believe. They downgraded the the um, uh, situ. I call it situ situation. I don't know. They they downgraded it to just the same as influenza, which is wonderful. Um, and probably it's like uh, a long time after the United States and other countries had done this. But one thing that we learned over the last couple of years, last three years, is that Japan will have its own way. And I think a lot of you realize this. Um, through its actions of, since 2020, I wasn't really surprised because this isn't anything that was new. The way that they handled this is the way that they would handle just about anything uh, with extreme curiosity and almost the opposite of the rest of the world. And when I see the Western media compare Japan to other G7 countries, they did it differently. I don't think that, that really works at all to the advantage of getting what you want. And we've learned this that you can criticize all you want. Japan has its own way of doing things. They, they drive on the left side of the road. The U.S. drives on the right side of the road. I mean, they, people back in the parking spots, Americans will go in front first. Like, even the grammar is, like, backwards. So if it doesn't make sense, that's perfectly normal here in Japan. They have their own way to approach things. And for the most part, if you walk around the country and you, and you, and you come to visit, you kind of understand it sort of works for this country. It's one of the safest countries in the world. It runs very well. Um, things are orderly. People line up for everything. It's just a wonderful country um, with a lot of success domestically inside of the country, the way it runs. So when those policies sort of um, don't line up with the way that you think that it should go, well, take a look at your own country and you can probably see that there's a lot of things that aren't going well there either. So now that we're finished with this, all of that all of the criticism, all of the, the anger, all of the frustration, which I felt with you for every single moment of those uh, years, is now gone. Poof. Starting May 8th, it's like almost a fresh you know, piece of paper. We've all kind of reset. Starting April 1st, which was just a few days ago, the new fiscal year in Japan starts, and April 1st is a time of of the year where everything starts anew. And this is really important for um, Westerners, I suppose Westerners is the right term, to understand the new, the, the new year pretty much starts in April 1st for everything, for school, for uh, a lot of activities, for um, financial purposes. There's like so many things start on April 1st. And uh, uh, for me, it, it, it was really hard the last couple of weeks of May, of March, because of taxes and things like this domestically. But once we get into April 1st, there's like a ah, sigh of release, and then we can go and enjoy the cherry blossoms, which were too early this year and are now pretty much over in the city of Tokyo, uh, the metropolitan area. Um, I'm going to take some questions that I asked here on Patreon, as well as our Discord server of people that are coming to visit to help them out. But I want you to understand what the current situation is right now. Now, if you go over to the ministry, I, I put this link in the description of the video. Here. Um, so 
this is the um, Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare, and this is where you're going to have all of the updates here. Um, temporary measures are currently being applied to those who are entering Japan from China. Basically, they, they've gotten rid of a lot of the, the um, criteria, the, the border um, measures already. But there's a Visit Japan web app, which, I, again, I, I keep calling it an app out of, out of um, habit. But it's not an app. It's all on your on your um, smartphone now. You we really need to have this until May eighth. So I would log in, build an account, and then upload your um, if you have them vaccination certi certi certifications. If you've been vaccinated, I think it's two times or is it three times? I'm not sure. It it helps you get through really quickly. But it's no longer necessary to be vaccinated to enter Japan um, as long as you have a negative. And here's a QR code for it. As long as you have a negative result, if you're not vaccinated and you have a negative result within 72 hours of departure, that's all you need. And then you're, you're fine to visit Japan. So all those restrictions are pretty much over. Um, here's what you need to register. You need an air ticket, a passport, vaccination certificate. Oh, three doses now. Okay, that's good to know. Or a negative test result. So if you're unvaccinated, that's not a problem. And a mail address. And that's it. And then boom, you have this um, app that's installed on, the, on your on your. Um, I keep calling it an app. It's just a, a really bad, it's just a really bad um, habit of mine. Um, it, if, if you uh, um, use this website, the moment you get off of the plane, and I, I've been talking with people that are visiting Japan, this is um, really a critical thing here. The moment you get off the plane, someone will, will greet you and you show the app the color that it has changed and you are tunneled, uh, funneled into uh, an express line, which will get you out of the airport uh, earlier than those that didn't do any of this procedural work. Um, before you get on the plane, you, you need to have your vaccination certificate. But if you've done it digitally, I haven't heard of anybody that had to produce the actual form, but I would still bring it with you because you just never know. In Japan, paperwork is is uh, appreciated. I don't know. P people love paper here. Permits, applications. That's one of the reasons why I have an assistant to take care of all of this stuff. There's like, whenever you try to book a, even a location shoot for YouTube, you need to fill in all these permits and, and uh, Zoom meetings and stuff like this. There's just a lot of bureaucracy with, with everyday life in Japan, which is probably the most frustrating thing of living here. Um, so that, that's pretty much it for, for those that are entering. So between now and May 8th, you need this um, Japan Travel Web uh, smartphone-based uh, application. Uh, the procedures is it, it moves pretty quickly too. Once you upload your vaccination certificates, you usually you're approved pretty quickly, and it's a rolling basis. So if your flight is two months away, there might be other people who are flying two days away, and they'll be prioritized in the application um, to get a blue verification mark. Um, they'll be prioritized over you because you have some more time. But make no mistake, you will get verified. Um, before you leave, and if not, when you arrive, you explain them what, what happened, and uh, you should be um, have any problem. Even those that, that didn't do the app still get into the country. It just sometimes takes as much as three hours, some people have been telling me. Um, but again, from May 8th, this is all gone, and which is a really great thing. I have a link in the description to the news article from um, Kyodo News, which is one of the sources I get for news in Japan in English, which I think you should bookmark um, and, and kind of understand what's going on in the country before you come. I think it'll help a lot. And uh, TokyoChipo.com is another source of information where they have um, so many events. that they, they do such an amazing job of updating all of the events that are happening in Tokyo and around the country. So I would bookmark TokyoChipo.com. Uh, also, uh, my friend is one of the owners of the company. <laughs> so I know him to be a very, very good guy. And uh, that's another reason why I do promote them a little bit more. Um, I have some questions here, and then we're going to go to the Discord server um, and see if we got some people that are checked in uh, into the chat room. Uh, Discord is a place, if you don't know what it is, it's free to, to enter into there. And if you are in Japan traveling around, it's a place where you can find other travelers um, that are uh, visiting and maybe uh, meet up if you'd like. Uh, it's not a, a, a shack up site, right? <laughs> Hello, I821, is that right? So, um, yeah, there's some... Um, it's a great site for information for people that are on the ground right here in Japan. At least that's what we're seeing. Not just about the channel, but for, for those that are visiting. Um, let's see here. Deanna writes in here, uh, I heard I heard about this. Just wish it was before my April 25th 
departure. I know, and it's funny because so many people came over the cherry blossoms, the spring season, that they did not benefit from this change. So Deanna, I feel your pain. Um, I hear you because a lot of the people that I talked to, they had they got through okay. Even Danny, who was visiting from Canada, he got through immigrations okay. It just took time. Um, and he didn't have a vaccination certificate, uh, I, I think, so he had to go through um, the process. But um, I think he was out in three hours and at his hotel by midnight, which is good. He, he got out. I, I, it seems like two years ago, people had to... people. Japan flew a friend of mine, just, just out of historical reference, in 2021 and even in the beginning of 2022, Japan had these um, quarantine centers and you would arrive at the Narita airport and because they were booked and full, these quarantine centers for travelers coming from even the US, they required like a, like a, a 10 day hotel stay where you, and then it decreased it to seven and then three days. You had to go to a hotel for 10 days the government paid for it, but they flew people to Nagoya from Tokyo. Like you were going to a completely different destination, even to Fukuoka, and you would stay in a hotel for three to seven to 10 days to quarantine. And if you were okay, you'd take a test. If you're negative, they would allow you, they'd fly you back to Tokyo and then you'd be into the country. And I remember Greg, life where I'm from, Greg had to go through this. I remember uh, um, talking to him um, through FaceTime and stuff and trying to bide the time as he, he was making his way through quarant required quarantine to enter back into Japan. I just didn't leave. It wasn't worth it. And I'm so glad and happy to finally be over it. Uh, Peso writes in here, I'm glad to hear. Does this mean that uh, VJW is going away or will QR immigrations and customs forms stick around? Um, I'm not really sure exactly what you will get, but my understanding um, and my assumption which means almost nothing, which is why I, I put the link to the uh, um, sites, is that it's going back to the way things were, meaning if you're from these countries, you can just enter. It's The reason why PESO is because Japan has decided back in February to downgrade this to something like influenza. Now, when they did that and they put the writing on the wall, they were pretty much saying that this was going to happen, but they didn't officially announce this particular a nugget of information until just a few days ago. So it's all pretty much new. Um, I'm loving these questions here. Um, so we have here a setup in the Discord server right now. You can come in and join us uh, and I'll take some of your questions for the next uh, uh, little bit of time here. Um, let's see here. All right, so I'm on the stage here. Uh, Jim, can you hear me? We have hello hi eight two one UFO Bob is here. We've got the moderators in there. So if you would like to speak to me, just raise your hand as as it, it populates. These a lot of people are coming into the uh, uh, chat room uh, as we speak. So thanks everybody for coming in here. Wow, look at all the people coming in. Awesome. Uh, I I want to help you with your travel uh, plans, your questions here. I want to keep it specifically towards, hey, Brandonia, I wanted to drop in and say hi real quick at a farmer's market, aloha. Hey, thanks, Brandani Brandonia. I wanna help you guys with your travel plans. If you have questions that aren't related to border entry and travel, please hold off from raising your hand. I, sp I sp literally wanna just hear about this particular topic because it's on everybody's mind. So when you watch this in the playback, this is a valuable resource for everybody. Um, Let's do a little voice check here. Uh, UFO Bob, hello, hi, 821. Can we do a little voice check to see if I got the mic running? It's sounding good from this side. All right, awesome. I'm going to put another microphone right next to the Discord server so uh, we have even better audio, if that's even possible, because audio is important. There you go. All right, we should be able to hear pretty, pretty clearly. Uh, let me know if the audio is too loud uh, in, in the other direction. All right, let's try here. We have Jaywin on the line. Jaywin, are you ready to visit Japan? I am. I'm actually, I have my flights booked and I'll be out there August 1st through the 12th. So I'm super excited. Awesome. Um, so I'll keep it short and brief since there's a lot of people in here. So I just caught partial of your stream, but the biggest thing with this, with this change is um, would I be better off still getting the third booster shot just to be on the safe side, even though that they're going to be dropping a lot of these, um, pretty much dropping the regulations or what you would call it, um, and then just have a safe route to get in pretty quick? 
because my biggest fear is yeah. not having it and then it, get running into some issues per se. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh, it's okay. Yeah, you know, if you're coming between now and May 8th, that's a really tough call because there are some people that, you know, like the vaccines and some people who don't want to get another one. And I'm not going to tell anybody to compromise on their morals or to do something that they want to do, but it would make it easier. I mean, it, to get into Japan, if you have that vaccination and you have proof of it, it just makes it easier. Um, whether you, you believe in vaccines or not, um, this is not a place, this is not a place that you want to get sick. All right. This is not a place that you want to get sick here with that. And, um, if getting the vaccine maybe helps you mitigate this and maybe you have symptoms and you're not kind of contagious, I don't know, but it might be something to consider before you travel. It might be something that's good. Um, but it will definitely, um, um, play into saving you maybe an hour at the airport. But then you have to think of it like this. If, even if you got the third vaccination shot, you're probably just saving yourself a little bit of time at the airport. Um, it might be better just to take a negative uh, PCR test before you leave. But for me at the airport, and I took it at Newark Airport in, uh, in New Jersey, New York, that cost me like for me and Kanai, like 600 or $700, I remember, to get two expedited PCR tests that were... Um, that were recognized by Japan. Um, we weren't we weren't U.S. residents. Or Kanai wasn't a U.S. resident, so she couldn't take the ones at like CVS or the pharmacies that they give. But uh, you know, this was the only option that we had. So maybe U.S. citizens might have a different um, situation. And I'm sure there's the waiting time is a lot less. It just depends on where you are in the world. But I, I you know, maybe it's a good idea. Yeah, I, I Go ahead. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, no. I'm, I was just to, to put a, a ribbon into this. Maybe it's a good idea. I don't know. Okay. Well, I appreciate it. I, I'll, you know, I have a C, I have a local CVS. So, uh, like I said, the trip isn't still out for another four more months. So I'll kind of just check back and kind of go from there. But that's pretty much all I had. And thanks again, John. And don't forget, the last thing I'll say is if I run into you, I'm the guy that keeps mentioning the LL Bean shirt. So if I see you, oh, no. <laughs> I really will. I, I am seriously going to buy a couple medium shirts. And if I run into you, I run into you. If I don't, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you, so, Jay Wynn. Yeah. Thanks for the question here. Um, we got a, anybody else raising their hand or are you guys just hanging out inside there? Uh, UFO Bob, do you have any questions regarding travel to Japan? Down off the top of my head, I'm wondering how many people out there are willing to wait uh, for later in the year when things kind of get smoothed out in terms of the new system. I myself would probably not come until September or October. Yeah, that's a great point. I think um, right now, the reason why there's a massive queue at the airport and why it's taking some people three, four hours to get out of it is just because um, when travel returned to Japan, uh, during 2021 and 2022, they were laying off a lot of workers at the airport. This isn't just a Japan-specific thing. A lot of places around the world um, don't have enough airport workers, uh, people to take over. And uh, when they reopened the borders, um, when Prime Minister Kishida did that, it, it seemed pretty sudden for Japan. Japan does not move very quickly. I think a lot of you realize this. Nothing in Japan moves like quick, all right? It's not like... Um, the United States, which is one of the things that I love about the United States is how fast things move. And people, even Americans might not realize this, but the rest of the world moves at a, a, a snail space pace compared to the United States, um, which is why it'll always be a really competitive place, regardless of what you think. When you leave out, leave the U S you realize how amazing some of the stuff is that, that happens over there. Um, in Japan, hiring these airline workers mean, um, uh, training and then passing tests, which are sometimes impossible. Uh, and then once they get hired, they have like on the job training. It's, it's, it's crazy painful. And it's just not, not been great. I met, one of the comments I got from somebody who just visited was that there weren't enough lines open, which created bottlenecks. And I'm hoping that by summer, to answer your question, uh, things are a lot, a lot better. And then by 2024, it's just really, really smooth. It should be so fast to get in. But I'm not like all of you. I have, you know, I'm a resident. So 
Kanai and I, Kanai's a citizen, so we go straight through. I, I have a special line. I'm even faster than the Japanese line. I'm a returnee. And returnees have their own special line. And there's a dude there or a lady there. And, you know, I, we give our thing and boom. I'm, I've been out a couple times faster than, than Kanai was from the citizens line. So, um, you know, I don't have to suffer in the Ford vis tourist visitors line like you guys do. But I realized that, uh, just realized that um, if you do want to save some time and you're vaccinated three times, then make sure you get that Japan travel web until May 8th. And then I... I believe they're just going to get rid of the program. Why keep it around? It's obsolete. Um, there aren't any, aren't any countries that are, are in a situation that are, are dangerous with this now. And if, if they've downgraded this, and that's the big, that's the big, um, uh, biggest piece of information with all of this that, that might answer your question. Japan's downgrading this. So it's right now still considered a really big deal, but it gets downgraded in a, in a month to not almost like influenza, which is, um, you know, driving the policy. So if that is the case, I would assume, and I, I, we don't know until the formal announcement is made that you do not need an app or tests or anything like this. We have to trust, we have to, to trust everybody. And I know that's really hard because there's, you know, human nature is to trust nobody for some people. I trust some people. I, yeah, I, I trust people, but we have to trust everybody as a society of people. If you're sick, you're going to stay home. And if you're not sick, you're going to come and, and you know, you can go out and do stuff. But if, if you're not feeling good, you shouldn't be out and about or you should be wearing a mask, which is why people wear masks in Japan, that in pollen. You'd wear it if you felt sick so you wouldn't get other people sick because you're thinking about the people around you. And that's one of the great things I think I love about Japan. Uh, over the course of the last month, since Japan uh, dropped the mask rules, they weren't requirements, but they dropped the mask wearing rules, meaning it was up to you and your personal decision. Uh, I haven't worn a mask except for on public transportation and a few times, um, but I carry one with me. Um, but I've noticed more and more people dropping the masks as well, and nobody tells me to put on a mask. We had a couple of people the first week after the rules were dropped but nobody looks at us funny anymore. Nobody, I, I'm saying that because I, I tell Kanai, don't wear a mask, don't wear a mask. But she, I think she feels comfortable wearing the mask in certain situations and I can completely understand that. But I've seen the pivot where people in Japan are starting to become more, this is mo most, most important in Tokyo. People see other people without masks. They're not foreign faces anymore. They're Japanese. And we're seeing more and more people saying, hey, wait, they don't have to wear masks. I'm wearing masks. I don't want to wear a mask. I'm t taking off my mask. And this is just something that is a personal decision. You don't have to, but my personal decision is I don't want to. I don't need to. I won't. <laughs> but if I'm in public transportation, I probably will, uh, especially if it's crowded. I will, basically, at least um, for a little bit longer. Uh, I'll take some questions right now from the chat here. Um, I'm from Florida. I recently stopped wearing a mask outside by, and some would heckle me for still wearing a mask. I think it, I, I don't want to talk about masks uh, for very long, I, uh, but to put a ribbon on this, uh, I think that, it, again, Japan, this is the perfect example. Japan is the opposite thinking of not just the United States, but like the West. And you have to, this is one of the things I love about Japan that makes it so unique. And one of the things that frustrates people about Japan because it is unique. Travelers and people who come to live in Japan, they expect Japan to be like their own country. And there's most of the disappointment is that when it's not, when they, they come up against the bureaucracy and they come up against rules that they think don't make sense, but they make perfect sense in Japan. They just don't make sense to you, who is not used to the system. And they don't make sense to me most of the time. And I'm quasi used to, I don't even know what quasi I mean. I'm fairly used to understanding the uh, system here in Japan, I'm used to not understanding it, which is makes me used to understanding it because I'm not sure if in Japan, you don't understand the reasons why you just understand that it's a rule and you don't need to know the reason why it doesn't matter. It's a rule and that's what you protect. And this is just part of the, it's just the way that, that, uh, um, things work. Of course they back it up and there's news programs on in Japan. If we compare it to like, you know, before World War II and stuff. It's a night and day 
uh, difference because we do have a media, we do have people who check, but it's not at the same level as in the United States. And people feel comfortable following the rules, rules are rules, and that's what makes Japan work so well and why the country is so safe and um, there's a lot of positives on it, on this. Uh, they're more respectful in Japan, rights and orients. Yes, I, I think so too, but sometimes to a fault. Sometimes it's good to fight back and argue a little bit, but that's probably the American in me. No, the rules don't make sense. Uh, um, I've lived in Japan six years. Most of the rules don't make sense, gambler. And I think if you're going to be staying in Japan for another six years, you're probably not going to try to, to get frustrated by the fact that it doesn't make sense. It just is what it is. And this is, the, this is the beauty of being an expat for so long. Those that have lived here for a long time, they don't, they don't fight against the system or argue or get frustrated, maybe a little bit, but we understand the longer you've been here, it's just the system. That's the way it is. Uh, John, what is your part of the play? How much? I don't understand, James. Um, you know, if you want to, if you want to be a conspiracy theorist, that's fine. Uh, you can. Can you confirm what is needed to get into Japan for the U.S. before the eighth? I. What do you mean by confirm? Let tell me the information, and I can confirm it. If you want to know, I put a link in the description of this video goes directly to the source. Again, I would not trust YouTubers for vital information on your trip. I wouldn't base it just on this. This is one piece of information that will help to get you into the link that I put in the, in the description, which is the authoritative source on what you need to do. So don't ask me to confirm it. Unless, if you say, um, my, my understanding is that if you are vaccinated three times and you fill in the Japan travel web, you get a blue colored notification and you go straight through uh, to immigrations, which is a faster system. If you, if you are unvaccinated, you get a PCR test 72 hours before departure on a certificate that is recognized by Japan. Make sure that it is on that certificate um, with, in the way that they like it. I, I don't think it maybe doesn't matter as much. But if you have that certificate with you and it's registered in through the app, then you get a blue and a, or a yellow, I think, and then you can you go back you go through a little bit faster. But everything is all the information is in the link that I provided. Go there, all right? Because again, here's the second reason why I'm hesitant to to start you know confirming information. People are gonna watch this in two three weeks, and the rules could have changed again. So even before May 8th, I, I don't know. I've been through this too many times where the rules are like in flux. Um, like a lot. I live in California. Japan sounds like a nice and peaceful country. It, it is, Miriam. I heard the people are very nice and respectful. That sure does sound nice. I have been talking with people who traveled around the country. One of the reasons why people return here is just because they have a pleasant time. If they compare it, I want, I want you to think about all the countries around the world right now that have all of these, uh, all these problems. You know, if you're going to France right now, France is a big popular destination. There's like riots in the streets in Paris going on. It's not the greatest time to be there. Japan's so perfectly peaceful right now. Yeah, every now and then North Korea might shoot a missile over us. But, you know, there's earthquakes as well. <laughs> so there's like other stuff here. But it's a perfectly... Perfectly peaceful place here. Um, let's see here. I really enjoyed you guys at the zoo. Oh yeah, so Alan, yesterday we were at the um, Yokoha Yokohama Zoo called Zureja. It was a really wonderful time. We kind of switched it up and I, I brought you guys along with me for a little bit of family time. We got to see Okapi. They have some really cool uh, different animals compared to Ueno Zoo at Zureja. And I think it's a much more natural a more suited habitat um, than Wayno Zoo, which is an older zoo, of course. So, but Wayno has done some renovations that have made it a little bit better. Um, Abysmal Fiend writes in here: All restrictions lifted, but still need a test if unvaxxed. Yeah, don't make me laugh. Well, that all goes away in less in one month. So that's the purpose of this. So you don't need any more of these uh, rules and policies. And as I've been saying for the last 10 minutes, nothing, it doesn't have to make sense. A rule is a rule. And you just expect it to follow it. 
If you don't agree with the rule, you could try to fight it, but it's just easier just to go along with it. That's why I'm, I'm still here in, after 25 years, happily. Uh, Jonathan writes in here, showed blue barcode at Haneda and got through within a minute. Wow. So there you go. It also depends on the time that you arrive. If you arrive at a time where there aren't a lot of other flights coming, you might get through very quickly. If you arrive at a time where it's quite congested, then it's gonna take a little bit of time to get through here. Uh, I'll take a couple more questions. Do we have anything in the Discord server? Um, I don't think we got anybody. It's pretty quiet. Yeah, we have a quiet bunch tonight. Yeah, we got a quiet bunch in here. We have uh, Alex is here with a hand raised. There he goes. Hang on. I was waiting for him to show up. There's the invite. All right. Be on stage. There you go. Hello. Hello, Alex. Welcome. Can you hear me? Yes. Hello, Alex. Welcome. How can we help you today? I, yes, I have a question. Sure. I'm, I'm traveling in June and I'm signing a contract for my apartment and I have to be before six at Shinjuku. So I was wondering if you could give me like a suggestion on a time to arrive at the airport given it's taking so long to get out of there and how long would it take me to get to Shinjuku? Wow, great question. Um, it, it doesn't take more than an hour and a half to get anywhere in Tokyo from Narita once you've cleared customs. And I'm saying an hour and a half because the next train might be, uh, you might need some time to jump on another train or um, it takes roughly uh, 70 minutes by bus. Depend and traffic okay. is, traffic usually isn't an issue. Um, if you're going to Shinjuku, bus might be the best option. I'm not sure if Narita Express goes there, but not a lot of Japanese take Narita Express. It's mostly tourists because it is more expensive than the bus and the the other train lines like a Skyliner. Oh, okay. But it's it, if you've got a JR Rail Pass, then you would take the Narita Express. Um, and if you have a business account and the money's not an option, you can get a receipt for your company. People take Narita Express. But if you're going to Tokyo Station, Narita Express is one of the most inconvenient locations to arrive in Tokyo Station. It's like in the sub-basement and it takes forever to get out. You're on the Marunouchi side. And if you're bringing luggage and bags, that means you got to yeah. lug, it, lug it up elevators and escalators. And if you come at a bad time, then you've got commuters walking all around you. It can just be hell on wheels. So I think, um, good show, I believe. So I think the best way is to come in by bus, but even then, let me think here. Uh, if you have to be in Shinjuku at 6 p.m. and you're coming in June when probably there'll be more workers coming in, um, yeah. are you vac? sorry to ask, but will you be able to get your vaccination certificate and everything and get a blue check mark for the yes. day? Okay. I have my three vaccinations. Okay, as long as you have a blue mark in there, it won't matter because that app will be gone. So you're just going to be able to get through. My estimation is, okay. is as long as they don't... See, I almost I caught myself. My estimation is that because procedures went back to the way 2019 was, it's going to be pretty quickly. just depends on the staff there. So I figured it'll be out of the airport in 90 minutes maximum. Okay. Because nobody's getting tested anymore unless they are... Um, unless you arrive at the airport with a fever and, and you're coughing when they'll identify you, then there's no reason why you won't get through the airport pretty quickly now um, because there's nothing to, to hold you up. If you arrive in the morning, you're going to be there on time. If you arrive by... Okay. I think if you arrive by uh, like 1 p.m., you shouldn't have any issues at all, worst case scenario. But if you arrived at, at 3.30, you should be okay too based on the fact that you know things should go through. It just depends if there's a lot of other planes coming in when the, the time you arrive and how many workers there are at the airport yes oh wow thank you so much especially for the the transportation tips because i was thinking of getting into the train but now i will look into the the bus because it looks way more convenient it's way more convenient and way more comfortable because you put your bags underneath the bus you don't have to think about it. You sit down, there's free Wi-Fi on the bus. There's even places to plug in your phone if you want to charge it. And, and the time goes by pretty quickly compared to um, 
the train where you have to, to wheel it down to the platform, you have to put it into a luggage rack, get it out. Everything on the bus is done for you. And I believe they have tr buses that go straight to Shinjuku. That might take um, maybe 10, 15 minutes more than going to Tokyo Station, but um, it's more comfortable and cheaper. So something to definitely consider against the Narita Express. Thanks, Alex, for the yeah. question. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Okay. Awesome. Um, I think the transportation coming into Narita had been an issue for a very long time because there was a 1,000 yen bus, which was so cheap, but they, done, they did away with that because there wasn't anybody going to Narita. I did a live stream there in 2020 when I took a, a friend of mine to the airport. I went to the international terminal. Nothing was open. It was a ghost town. So they ended the 1,000 yen bus and I believe they brought it back because uh, Kanai and I took it, was it 1,000 yen or a little bit more maybe because of inflation, but um, we took the bus uh, to Narita and it was so smooth. We took it to Terminal 3 and the ride is so smooth. It's just so, for me, the bus is the better option uh, to get. Of course, there's a possibility where you could come in the traffic at certain times. Um, coming into Tokyo in the morning is the only time I think that the bus is gonna be coming up against traffic between like uh, 7 and 10 a.m. If you arrive at Narita, it's between like like uh, 6 and 10 a.m. No, 6 and 9 a.m. There could be a lot of traffic coming into the city of Tokyo and you could be held up, um, especially if the bus is coming on Wangan Dori, which is the one that comes around the seaside. I've seen it's just like locked up um, for a couple of, uh, for like, like an hour. But if you're coming in the afternoon and evenings, coming into Tokyo is so painless. It's it's a very smooth. Um, but of course, train. Some people just like to like to ride the Narita Express, and I don't blame you. Air to the Run is here. I'm aiming to come later this year in October, November. I will be here. I'll be here. Awesome. That's good news. I'm so happy too right now because as I do the live streams, even in Fukushima, I found people coming up to say hi to me that watched the show. And I'm getting rid of the you found me cards pretty quickly. Um, I have a couple hundred left actually. So <laughs> definitely come and say hi. Um, you don't have to stalk me, look at your smartphone. You just come up and say hi even if I'm live streaming and I'm happy to give you um, a you found me card. I'm, I'm carrying them now, even backup cards in case I do forget them. I have one with me. Um, that's about it. I don't have any other things to add to this. Go ahead, you have a bomb. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking here at the video chat. Michael Sassano put in a question I think might be good to answer. He says, do you think Japan's entry process will eventually get back to how it used to be pre-COVID or how is it now or how it is now? Will, will that be the norm? Well, no. As I explained, uh, Michael, I, right now we have um, procedures in place. And on May 8th, according to the announcement from the government, and I put links in the description, that's all going away. And we're going back to no more border measures that were put into place in 2020. Because the fact is that Japan just downgrade, it will downgrade this pandemic to influenza version. Like it's, it's a low level again. And if that's the case, there's no reason to have border measures for this. So I believe it goes back to the way 2019 was, and it's just whoosh, through the airport. Um, let's be honest here. If you look at the numbers since Japan opened up the border in, in November of last year and over the last month in particular, the numbers are going down. So there was no correlation between you know inbound tourism and people getting sick. Of course, it brought it into the country, and, and but it would have gotten here anyways with business travelers coming in. So what we're seeing is that maybe the policy was not the wisest that they made. But again, as I said, we don't really argue with the rules. You can be frustrated and understand that, but just also understand that it's just the rules. This is the way that Japan has operated for centuries. It's like not surprising. It's surprising to me that it went on as long as it did, but it's not surprising that it went on. <laughs> it's like, I guess it's like, maybe I'm just used to it, but, um, Michael here writes in here, I'm an hour by air from Boston, a and A, JAL or a and A from Boston, which is better? They're both pretty good. If you compare it to like American Airlines, not to beat up on American Airlines, um, but JAL and a and A, and we call it, we say ANA, JAL and ANA. 
Ana is, I, I prefer Ana, but Jal is a very good airline. It's a, it's a very good airline. Um, so I don't think you're gonna have any problems with either one. If you can, if, if Anna is available, I always get that first. And then if nothing's available, then you, I go to Jal. That's the way I operate, but everybody's different. I've had uh, friends of mine that had better experiences on Jal than they'd had with ANA. So I've had experiences with ANA or Anna that I did not like, and it really made me upset. And um, um, I've had like, you know, I, I, let's not get into it, but it was frustrating. And um, I said, okay, I'm gonna go to Jal. But in the end, I always go back to a and just because overall, no airline is perfect, but they, they're pretty darn close to it. And I'll never forget, and this is why I'm, I'm pretty strong with ANA. ANA Anna read my Twitter feed, and I don't have a lot of followers on Twitter. I think there's like 10,000 or something. I don't really use it that much. I guess they'd, they'd read that I was taking them, their airline to go to Bali on honeymoon. And with, with, and when we got on the plane, they brought out a special plate. I, I don't know how they knew this. We didn't, we, I didn't try to get an upgrade because I, I know they didn't do that anymore. I tried to get an upgrade because we were on our honeymoon. They brought out a special plate um, with desserts on it saying, congratulations. And I'm like, how do they know? It's like, oh, okay. So I, I, I've talked to them through Twitter before and they followed what I write. Wow. That was really good. That was really smart. And now whenever I get the chance, I just, I fly A and A because of that. Because, you know, little, the, the little details go a long way. Something like that, you don't forget, right? Speaking of which, we're, we're going to have our anniversary, fifth year coming up real soon. So a lot of you on this channel who have saw the uh, announcement when I first got hitched might have been pretty sudden. That was five years ago. It's crazy, right? It's five years ago. Um, we have somebody who raised their hand here. Woo! All right, let's bring bring him up on the stage. As long as it isn't something to complain about my fashion sense because I wear the same thing almost every day. I wash it. Hello. Hello, welcome. How can I help you today? I can recommend Anita Airport and Narita Airport. For traveling. Uh, do I recommend Narita like over Haneda? Is that... Yes. Um, that's a tough question. There are things that I like about Narita Airport. Because it's so far from Tokyo, it's not as crowded. It's usually got more space. Um, the shopping might even be better at Narita Airport. But Haneda is much closer to the city. You can get there by monorail. So it's not, it's not a one-hour trip to go back and forth. It's like... 25 minute trip, which could be a big deal depending on um, the time of your flight. Uh, Haneda is much more convenient. In fact, if you ever, if, if you were in a rush, you could probably take a taxi there and it wouldn't cost you, it would cost you a third of the amount um, as it would be to go to Narita. Um, so I, I, I prefer Haneda personally, but I have no problems with leaving to Narita for international flights. For domestic flights, it's Haneda all the way. Narita is just too far. Okay. Also, I, I believe JAL, they use on the Dreamline is they have under economy class, it's 242 instead of 333 like other airlines, so that might be a good better option for some people. Wider seats. Sorry, which one? JAL, economy class, might be wider, slightly. Oh yeah, the economy class on on A uh, and A is like premium economy on American Airlines <laughs> to me. <laughs> like I, I, I took I took we took premium economy when we flew to the U.S. in twenty twenty two or twenty twenty one. I can't remember. I think it was last year. Yeah, time flies. And uh, premium economy is great on uh, a on A and A. But I looked at the economy class and it's pretty nice too. You have massive monitors in the back. A little bit more leg room than the U.S. carriers, so I I would highly recommend A and A and JAL just because of the leg room that you get now. Um, there's other reasons to take it. The food is better. They don't charge. JAL is what I don't I don't I haven't taken JAL in an international flight in a long time, but I I would assume that they're pretty much competitive with A and A and a lot of stuff. But 
because yeah. they had, I, I believe that Jal had gone through a bankruptcy not too long ago and they, they took government money and they couldn't do the same kind of upgrades that A&A did. They, they might be slightly behind, but I'm, I'm guaranteed that they're going to catch up really fast, especially now that tourism has returned. Both of the, both of the uh, carriers have gotten boosts in the stock market uh, as a result of uh, tourism returning the last time I checked. So I, I know that they're going to be upgrading um, planes and services um, that are comparable cause, um, for that exact reason. But I, when I went took the ANA flight, I couldn't believe how comfortable the economy looked. I'm like, dude, did we even need to take premium economy? I don't know. Um, w if you're flying with a kid after two years old, you have to, you have to get them their own seat. And Leo had a bassinet. So premium economy made sense with a bassinet. But now that the three of us have to go and he needs his own seat, economy is a better option because the, the armrests don't go up in premium economy, but in economy they do. And we can make like a bigger, a bigger bed where Leo could, could sleep on it um, between the seats or something. So that economy just makes more sense on even, even though it's perfectly cheaper, but and there's a lot of, you have to think about it, but there's a lot of reasons to, to pick ANA's economy just because it's so much more comfortable than, than uh, American Airlines or United Airlines economy. And free booze, too. I don't know if, if the U.S. carriers still do that, but. <laughs> yeah, although all the airlines, they change their policies. I don't know how the U.S. carriers will compete by nickel and diming, but apparently they do. Uh, the overall flight prices might be cheaper, but. I got to tell you, I, I have not had, for international flights, I've had bad, bad situations with the American carriers that made me question whether I will ever fly a U.S. carrier again. And I look at the prices and the differences, and if it's like 50% to, to A&A, I will pick a U.S. carrier and go through the pain <laughs> because it's just a budget issue, right? I mean, you're, we're, both gonna, we're all going to end up in the same place. Why pay more, right? But then there are situations where it's so painful and I kind of wish that I had paid for ANA because they, they're on time, they're polite, they take care of you better, uh, even the lounges are better. So, um, and the, the, the types of passengers that go on there maybe are better. Nobody, likes, nobody wants to fight if, you, if you're upgrading to an a, a ANA or JAL. I'm just putting that out there. I'm not saying that there's anything wrong with Spirit or Freedom Airlines or whatever the ones that budget carriers. I just noticed that there's more fights than there are in, in Japan. <laughs> the airline fights, airplane fights are scary. We're, we're all trapped in a sardine can that's in like 50,000 feet in the sky. And if people are fighting, that's not good. Thanks for the question. I appreciate it. Um, do we have anything else in the chat here? Hello, hi. Um, or UFO Bob, did you see anything while I was talking? Nope, I don't see anything in the chat, and I've been also watching the uh, video chat, and I don't see any questions there. Ron TV writes in here, free booze for the pilots. I, I understand that, and I hope I, I, I hope it's after the flight. They can have all the free booze that they, they want after they arrive, um, but yeah, there's been some issues. I'm, I'm pretty sure that they're over it, but you never know. That's a scary thing. Um, yeah, it, it, Jal has had more problems with that, um, which is something that, that is of, of concern, but I, I don't think it, it, it's much of a problem anymore. Um, there you go. So I, I hope this is useful for you. Again, you can leave a comment in the description, in, the, in this video, and I'll try to look at it if you have anything in the playback of it. But um, join our Discord server. There are people here right now in Japan that went through the immigration policies, the customs, and all this, and it will give you up-to-date information there. All you have to do is ask. Uh, even in the general chat, there's people that are visiting Japan right now that are, that are just checking in and looking, look at their sharing travel photos. Like, uh, it's really useful. Um, I use Instagram, the hashtag searches, to see what Ikebukuro is like right now before I go. Um, that might be a one, one way to do it. Look on Instagram for the hashtags, but also the Discord server and only in Japan. Um, when you arrive, share your photos there and your experiences there. It does help the, your other fellow travelers. Um, and I'm really glad that we have this server so we can all share uh, the information um, and make it really easy to get in and out of this country. Thank goodness it's all over. This is probably the last of the last of travel updates. I might do something on May 10th just to give an update on what it's like after 
um, these, uh, all these restrictions have, have gone away? Is it really back to like 2019? I want to hear from you guys um, visiting Japan on your experiences coming through after May 8th. So I might do one more, but for the most part, if you have any questions regarding the policies of entering into Japan, just go to the URL sites that I put in the uh, links in the description. It is the authoritative source, JNTO, the Japan National Tourism Organization, uh, MOFA, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and uh, the Ministry of Health, Labor, and Welfare. Those three are the places where you should get your th source of information directly from the agencies. Never rely solely on a YouTuber, including myself, for your information because what, what you see on YouTube can be dated the dates aren't always on it if you're looking, if you're searching through it, and everything changes really quickly. Uh, I don't think it's going to change, but that's just an assumption, and you can't you can't book your trip based on someone's assumptions, right? You need you need a solid source. Joshua writes in here, Jal does two four two on eight uh, eight seven eighty sevens. Oh, this is information. This is interesting. Dreamliners com uh, compared to three three three. On all the other airlines, uh, 787 Dreamliners. JAL does have a different configuration, doesn't it? I, I think that the 242 is better because I a 333, I don't want to sit next to, you know, it's usually couples and then some random person. So I, I like the 242. So you have that. And for families, you can sit in the middle. Let me tell you something. On a Trans-Pacific flight, looking out the window gets boring, all right? There are advantages to sitting in the middle sometimes. Um, not so many. There used to be, I think it was Continental that had 252. There were some airlines that had 252 because I remember being trapped in the center of a middle part. Um, what was it? Continental Airlines um, 2003, I think. I, I flew Continental Newark to Tokyo, direct flight. I was in the... Get this, I was put in the very back of the plane in the middle of the five seats. Like I was in the, I didn't want to sit down. I have to be honest with you. I just did, forgot to confirm or something. So they put me like right, it's right up against the toilets. Those seats don't go back for 14 hours. I would have been trapped in the middle on the very back row. So you know what I did? True story. Uh, I wouldn't tell it. <laughs> true story. True story. I, I got up and I started helping. Oh my gosh, there's ads in there. That's a long time that that's been there. Sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I, uh, the battery died. But to just to pin up this story here, um, I was in the very back of the continental flight from Newark to Tokyo, a 14 hour flight. I didn't want to sit down. So I started to help everybody with their luggages by putting it into the overhead luggage. And uh, like everybody, I said, hi, welcome aboard. I was just, I was just fooling around. I did it about 20 times. It, I was doing it for like 15, 20 minutes because they allowed me. The only thing that was great was I got to get on the, the flight earlier because I was in the back. And the flight attendant came up to me um, and he goes, what are you doing? And I go, look, I, I'm sitting right there. I don't want to sit down there, but I want to stay up as long as possible. And if I can be helpful, then I will do it because I don't want to just stand here and do nothing either. So I'm helping people with the luggage. And he, he was, I, and he looked like he was angry. This is a flight attendant, but he, he was joking. And he goes, I don't know what to do with you. Well, the only thing I can think of is to move your seat so you won't have to you be here disturbing all the passengers and all the other passengers are just, are just smiling. Maybe they knew something, I don't know. So he goes, okay, get your bags, we're moving you. And he wouldn't tell me where. I'm like, okay, great, uh, anywhere except for here. I thought he was gonna be putting me into like a, an aisle or something, maybe somebody had canceled. He kept on moving up the plane. Eventually we got to row one and he put me in one C. I still remember the, the uh, seat number, first class. He put me on first class. I remember going, when I got back home, I looked online to see how much the flight was. And it was like thousands of thousands of dollars. And I had paid about $600 for the, for the round trip ticket. It was pretty cheap back then. It's like, whoa. And I sat there in first class. I got to sleep. They brought a platter of cheese I had surf, I had a, what is that, like a steak and, and seafood, like some lobster tail. It was the most incredible experience. Uh, and and that flight attendant, he was stuck in economy, but he did come in one time. He goes, just checking up on you. <laughs> and I was like, yeah. So this is the best flight ever. And he goes, that'll serve you right for helping us out. <laughs> Don't do it. 
I said, okay. Yeah, I haven't helped out actually uh, aboard, but I haven't had that bad seat again. But sometimes, uh, you know, having a positive attitude about things uh, can get you a long way because people do take notice uh, when you do it. So it was a pretty good deal. Best, I've never been upgraded since that I can recall. No, not like that. That was really cool. I don't think they do that anymore. Um, it's all about, um, you know, making money and stuff. But if it was available, I guess the flight attendants can have that that leeway a little bit. So um, there you go. Uh, I hope that you guys uh, found this useful. Again, once again, just leave a comment below and I'll try to look at it and help you out any way I can. Um, um, but uh, it's just all really good news and I'm looking forward to seeing you guys. If you can make it here to Japan, uh, I will be here. Um, and if you can find me, you'll get one of those cards. All right, thanks everybody. See you, have a good day. See you tomorrow.